What's up? I'm Destin. This is an oscilloscope. You've seen oscilloscopes before, and you may have been intimidated by them. There's a lot of knobs and like clicky things, and it looks like something you could really mess up really easily, but they're actually pretty simple devices. The only thing an oscilloscope does is display a voltage over time, and you can change those time bases to see whatever you need to see so you can do some analysis, right? I've got two different microphones set up. I've got the left channel here, running to the vertical axis. I've got the right channel here running to the horizontal axis. Now, if you'd combine these two in a really interesting way, something pretty cool happens. Watch this whistle. Vertical axis. Watch this whistle. Horizontal axis. If we combine them, we can literally draw things. I'm about to show you something incredible. There's a whole subculture of people that have dedicated all of their free time to drawing things on oscilloscopes with sound. I'm going to cut these lights out and I'm going to come over to that camera right there. I've got three cameras set up and I'm going to push into this oscilloscope and I'm going to show you one of these tracks. It's called Blocks and it was specifically written to be displayed and heard with the use of an oscilloscope. Okay, let me push in here, cut the lights off here. All right, here we go. You are looking at the sound you're hearing. All of these waveforms were created using math to be both audibly and visually interesting at the same time. Yeah. Woo! Okay, so welcome to Austria. This is Hansi. Hey. And this is Jarabim. Hey. Uh, these guys make oscilloscope music. And today, we're gonna see if we can learn how it works. Man, there's a lot of smoke in here. I'm sometimes scared that my neighbors will call the firemen. <laughs> you let all the smoke go out? You do it all the time? Uh, yeah, a few times a week. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, let's learn. Jerbeam is the artist. Hansi is the genius. Is he the genius? Yes. He's the genius. So yes. what do you do? You're, you're the programmer? Yeah, I program and then also try to invent new techniques. But really our separation is not so strict. So Jerobeam is a solid programmer and I know a tiny bit about music also. So there's like a there's like a Venn diagram here and you're more the art. And yeah, and it opened up a little bit. Really? Yeah. And, and so you're, are you trying to do this whole thing yourself? Like, this is a whole genre now. Did you start it? 
Uh, kind of. There, there were some people who did sort of similar things before, um, but to to this extent, like with the whole with the entire album, uh, I think that was not done before. Okay, so so you you've so created an album that people can download. Yeah. So I'm gonna need to break it down. An oscilloscope has two signals. Is that how it works? Yeah, X and Y it works like uh, the etch sketch sort of, where you have two knobs and you can move the dot up and down and left and right. There's these two inputs and uh, one input moves it up and down and the other moves it left and right. But it, it's always a dot. Like, even when you see a line, it's really just a dot going very fast. So it's because it kind of burns its image onto your retina, the persistence of vision. Is that it's why? It's on your retina, but also the screen itself. Uh, like, the dissipation of the, of the energy, it's not so fast, so there's some afterglow. So on the right we have OSCE Studio, which stands for Oscilloscope Studio. And that's software that you created, right? Yeah, exactly. We develop it as we go along. Okay. And it's specifically for the purpose of making shapes for the oscilloscope. But, but to be clear, you sell this. Oh, yeah, yeah. On oscilloscopemusic.com. Um, yeah. Okay, cool. Exactly. All right, what does it do? It connects to Blender. There's a bridge. And so Blender is this 3D modeling application which you can use to make your shapes. And what I can do here is I can add stuff, for instance, a cube. And then it sends it right over into OSCE Studio and it converts it into a sound along the way. A sound that again makes this 3D model that you were drawing in the first place. So you've built a bridge between Blender, which is like one of the most popular 3D modeling animation yeah, and software packages. Yeah. And, and so your software is a bridge to an oscilloscope so that people can visualize 3D objects with sound. Yes, exactly. That's did, exactly. How right. did you do that with like with math, right? Uh, yeah, maths and programming. It's algorithms mostly. Really? Yeah. So you're really good at math. I'm all right, to be honest. Okay. I'm all right. <laughs> <laughs> at least I'm you not. Know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's always a way up. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. So so what can you do? So let's get the cylinder. So that's a cylinder. Uh huh. Let me. So here it's very slow, and you can see sort of how it figures out the pass, what it's doing. Uh -huh. And if I make it faster, you start to again see the whole shape. So you you take this object and you you divide it up into pieces so that we can draw segments or lines. Is that um, the idea is more to find a path which you could follow with your pen without ever lifting the pen. Okay, that's the main idea. And so this maps is from the seventies, roughly. It's called the postman problem, the art routing problem, also. Really? Yeah. Okay, so the postman problem is how do you get to the most amount of points in the shortest distance, right? Um, it's how do, you, how do you visit each street in a city map, basically. Okay. How do you go each street at least once with the least amount of doubles? How do, how do I change the arc to rotate? Oh, Just wow. rotate and give it a second. And then let it update. Man, yeah. that's crazy, dude. So it's even nicer if you just animate it directly over here because you can get much more fluid motion. And then you can actually hear how the viewpoint changes the sound. Dude, you're insane, man. Yeah, it's just the start of it. So now, how do you make music? Teach me, maestro. <laughs> what do you do? So I'm just gonna use one of the example objects in there. I'm gonna use a T-Rex and I rotate it so you can <laughs> That's see in it. Blender, right? Yeah, it was done in Blender and it's just the object sent to OSC Studio. And now, of course, I can do the same things here with rotations and changing the perspective a little bit. And now I can just animate parameters. Wait a sec, wait a second. Can we just stop and appreciate that I never knew what a T-Rex sounded like? <laughs> now you know. <laughs> now you know. <laughs> okay, go ahead. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. So, um, you've already seen the Trace plugin, and now I can also just add an envelope to this, and then it switches to the timeline view, and now here I can just draw timelines and repeat them, and so you see now this just happens, and it animates it, and uh, this is basically how I make music. I use lots of different parameters that are here in all these plugins, and I animate them to create music out of them. So you use keyframes? It's pretty much like keyframes. Just like in video editing software, that's what you do. And now for example, if I also animate the grid, then I can do 
like sort of generative melodies. It's almost the song already. Can you take this Tyrannosaurus Rex and have him slowly rotating as it's beating like that? Of course. Really? Maybe in this direction. And so you can pick an axis. Yeah. You can also do this. And also one cool thing about the software is that these sliders don't really have any limitations. You can also just type in any number and make it go like really fast. So that nothing makes sense anymore, but it creates some interesting patterns. <laughs> so we have a tornado Tyrannosaurus Rex. Yes. That's what a tornado Tyrannosaurus Rex sounds like. <laughs> it's a Tornadosaurus Rex. Tornadosaurus Rex. I know you appreciate it because you built it, but like, the world needs to know that you can do this. Yeah, the world <laughs> should know. <laughs> yeah. So I can also use uh, different objects here, and you see it, it does just the same. Like with a, with, oh, it crashes. <laughs> oh. Oh this is actually something that you can do very nicely in OC Studio. You can divide by zero and then it crashes. Really? Yeah, it's very direct. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like to not put limits in the software. Like I think if you want to input the stupid number, you should be able to input the stupid number. Really? Yeah, I think like we're all grown-ups, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> we know how to rightly divide the use of math. Yeah. Jerobeam really wanted me to understand that you didn't have to have fancy equipment to make oscilloscope music, you just had to know the math. He pulled up Ableton Live, a digital music sequencer, and he quickly visually programmed something using trigonometric functions. Then he simply started twisting knobs and proceeded to blow my mind. I want to make the connection between sine and cosine and the circle a bit more clear. So basically, the circle is drawn with a point that goes, that goes around the circle all the time. Now, the thing that you learn in school is with sine and cosine is about triangles most of the time. So these triangles will look like this. So the sine of this circle is the length of this line here and the cosine is the length of this line. If you want to see what these frequencies look like, then you get this image here where you can Holy see Holy cow, them. dude! Did you just do that with You're doing a Fourier transform on an oscilloscope using Fourier transforms. Well, it's basically just the sine and the cosine doing a circle. Yeah, I know what and it if is. I, if I, uh, turn you just way, then you can see that this is the same signal, the sine and the cosine. They are just shifted a little bit, so that that's what the difference between a sine and cosine actually is. It's just shifted 90 degrees. You but just did that with knobs. It's basically uh, just showing trigonometry, stuff that you should have learned in school. <laughs> it's mostly a, a, an interesting combination to use this very old device, which is almost forgotten and people throw it out of the labs. And, but then to apply new techniques to it, most of the maths we use is old, old, like 17th century sort of maths. And it's still, still there's, there's something about it to just work with it and to not just do it as a maths exercise but to play with it and look at it and feel it and i think that's the device really encourages you to play with this type of mathematics so the beauty of oscilloscope music is that we're at the point in time in history when digital technology is taking over the world but we still have access to analog technology so we can we yeah can, we can sort of rediscover it like stuff that they could have done on the oscilloscope if they had had digital technology. So it's sort of, what if it had stayed? I have met a lot of smart people making smarter every day, like genius level people. But the interesting thing about Jerobeam and Hanzi is that they have genius level intellect in multiple areas, math, art, music, like electronics, programming. These guys 
are incredible. So I wanted to see how far I could push them. Over the years, I've made some really interesting videos with a high-speed camera on Smarter Every Day. So I just wanted to see what they could do with pure math. So um, I took some of the best hits, right? So like the chicken with the stabilized head, a vortex collision, the bullet hitting the Prince Rupert's drop, the solar eclipse, laminar flow. I asked them what they could do with just a couple of days and pure math. And what they sent back was absolutely incredible. This is mind-blowing. That's it. Let's go talk to Hanzi and Cherubim and thank them for their time and all of the stuff they taught us how to do. It's incredible. They are legit wizards. Please go support their work. It's oscilloscopemusic.com? Yes, it is. And, and you have a YouTube channel, right? Yes. What's it, the name of the YouTube channel? Uh, it's just Cherubim Fenderson. Okay, and then and you have Aussie Studio on oscilloscopemusic.com and yes. can people get these files? Like, How does that work? Uh, we, we don't just want to release new tracks, but we actually want to release an EP where people can do the same thing. So it will include all the Aussie Studio files so that people can open them and change every parameter they want. Oscilloscopemusic.com, get Aussie Studio, get the new EP, play around with the files. That's cool, man. Thanks for doing this, guys. This is awesome. And thanks for being here. Hey, thanks for coming. Yeah, thanks for the hospitality. This is amazing. So anyway, I'm Destin. I am getting smarter every day. These guys are awesome. Jerbeam, Hanzi, thank you. Anyway, have a good one. Bye. What is that? It's the dive into the nose. It's people going into a nose? <laughs> what is that? <laughs>